Hello, I'm Carrie Ritchie, Army General Counsel and designated agency ethics official. As we find ourselves in another presidential election year, I want to convey the importance of knowing and adhering to the laws and regulations pertaining to political activities. Political activities that are applicable to all Army personnel, both military and civilian. These rules apply regardless of grade or rank or duty position. All personnel in the Department of Defense, including U.S. Army personnel, must be steadfast in our commitment to defending the Constitution and our nation's democratic principles. Maintaining the hard-earned trust and confidence of the American people requires us to avoid any action that could imply endorsement of a political party, political candidate, or campaign by any element of the department. It's your personal responsibility to know and understand these specific rules, particularly during an election year. To ensure we are ready to do what is right should a political activity dilemma arise, we must continuously train and prepare. This video is a great first step to educating yourself about these guardrails. Because we have both an incumbent president and a prior president running for office, there are some additional roles that you need to pay close attention to. For example, from the moment that President Biden and former President Trump each announced their presidential candidacy, you are prohibited from displaying slogans or other political paraphernalia from their prior elections to include the 2016 and 2020 campaigns. This would be considered political activity. This means while on duty or in the workplace to include while on a work-related teams meeting, you may not wear, display, or distribute items with the slogans 2024 Biden-Harris, Build Back Better, Make America Great Again, MAGA, or any other materials from President Biden's 2020 or 2024 campaigns or former President Trump's 2016, 2020, or 2024 campaigns. You'll hear about this provision and several more in the presentation to follow. Please pay close attention and don't hesitate to direct any questions to your servicing legal offices and in particular to your ethics counselor. I'm looking forward to a presidential election season where no member of the Army team makes the news for prohibited political activity. I'm proud of our Army and I'm confident that we will continue to maintain the trust of the American people throughout this presidential election season. Hello, I'm Major Rebecca Jackson, a professor of administrative and civil law at the Judge Advocate General's Legal Center and School. The 2024 election cycle is just around the corner, and this is a great time to remind ourselves, both Army military and civilian personnel, about the limitations affecting our personal participation in political activities. While each citizen is encouraged to exercise their rights of citizenship, such as voting and encouraging others to vote, it is important to keep sight of the fact that the Department of Defense and Army have a long-standing tradition of staying apolitical. This training video will assist you in applying the rules to possible situations you may find yourself facing and help you avoid unintended missteps. Here's the agenda for this training video. We will start by discussing why this type of training matters and how perception is an important concept within the political activities policy. Next, we will review key definitions such as partisan political activities in order to ensure we are all discussing the same things when we use these terms. Once we have the definitions down, we will examine both permitted and prohibited activities of Army civilian and uniform employees. This will help us identify our left and right limits when we participate in election cycles. We will also examine the limitations that apply in a telework environment as well as on social media. Finally, we will address how these rules affect our participation in public demonstrations. Not to worry, 
We'll have some checks on learning along the way to reinforce concepts as we go. In 2018 survey conducted by Pew Research, a majority of participants had a high level of confidence in the military as an organization to act in the best interest of the public. Over the last five years, some surveys have indicated that this high level of confidence in the military has eroded. What's causing this erosion? One possibility could be images of service members in uniform at political events or viral social media posts from service members or federal civilian employees identifying as military members and engaging in partisan political activities. Like this federal civilian employee stating, Hatchack be damned. These types of messages have led to a public perception, whether true or not, that the US military has a politicalization problem and thus could be one cause of the erosion in trust. The military is an apolitical institution. We defend the Constitution and the country regardless of what political party is in office. It is imperative to maintain the faith and confidence of the American people in the military. Our actions in and out of the workplace are a reflection, not just of ourselves, but also of our organization. The Hatch Act and the Department of Defense Political Activities Policy provide the framework to exercise our rights as citizens while preventing prohibited partisan political activities, which could damage our relationship with the American people. There are two main authorities that govern personal partisan political activities. The Hatch Act, which restricts the political activity of executive branch employees of the federal government, including Army civilians, and Department of Defense Directive 1344.10, which limits the behavior of uniformed service members, including Army soldiers. Some provisions in Directive 1344.10 are punitive, and violating them could lead to administrative or criminal punishment by your command. These punitive provisions include both the permitted and prohibited activities that we will discuss later in this presentation. Throughout the slides, you may see the picture that is displayed currently on the screen in the upper right-hand corner. I use this as a pictorial indication of whether we are discussing military uniform personnel, civilian personnel, or both. The Army encourages all members to carry out the obligations of citizenship, such as voting. Though voting is permitted, in order to maintain the apolitical perception of the military, active duty members should not engage in partisan political activity. And all military members, active or not, should avoid inferences that your political activities imply partisanship or official endorsement by the Department of Defense or the Army in your opinions. The Hatch Act uses the term political activity and Directive 1344.10 uses the term partisan political activity. For purposes of this presentation, these terms are synonymous. At this point, you're probably asking, okay, what is partisan political activity? So let's define some terms. In the next section, we are going to define partisan political activity, nonpartisan political activity, further and less restricted civilian employees. Partisan political activity is any activity directed at the success or failure of a political party, partisan political group, or a candidate for partisan political office. Now, a political party is any national or state political party, such as the more obvious 
Democratic and Republican parties. But this term also includes parties such as the Green or Libertarian parties. This is not an exhaustive list of partisan political parties, but is intended to merely provide examples of partisan political parties. A partisan political group is any committee, club, or other organization which ties itself back to a partisan political party. For example, a Young Democrats of America club. This club is tied to the Democratic Party as its name infers. However, not all clubs and groups announce their affiliation in their name. For instance, you cannot tell what political party the Moms for Liberty organization is affiliated with just from their name. But it's affiliated with the Republican Party and thus is also a partisan political group. Candidates for partisan political office are individuals seeking nomination or election to any partisan elective office, whether or not the person is elected. This includes independent candidates running for a partisan political office, such as the United States presidency, or at the state level, such as a governor or mayoral election. It does not matter if the election is at the local, state, or national level. These rules and definitions apply. So remember, any activity directed at the success or failure of a partisan political party, partisan political group, or a candidate for partisan political office is a partisan political activity. Some of these actions are permitted such as voting, and some of them are prohibited, such as engaging in fundraising. Now that we know what partisan political activity is, let's discuss what it's not. Basically, any political activity not associated with a political party is nonpartisan. For example, discussing legislation, or a ballot initiative on a state or federal ballot, or for example, talking about proposals for the National Defense Authorization Act. Discussing issues is nonpartisan. Some examples include the legalization of marijuana, the environment, gun control, or proposed military pay raises. Nonpartisan activities also include attending a march or a rally provided it is not a political event, such as the Women's March or the March for Life. Remember, these are just examples. We will talk more about personal participation in rallies toward the end of this presentation. Now you might be thinking that how can these issues be nonpartisan? Many of them fall on party lines. Though it is true that different partisan political parties may fall on one side or the other of social issues, merely discussing an issue, including support or opposition for an issue, is still nonpartisan. But you must be careful not to cross the line into partisan political activity. For example, just stating I am for or I am against some form of gun control is nonpartisan. But if you say, I am for or I am against gun control, and that's why you should vote for a specific partisan political party or candidate, you have now crossed the line into engaging in partisan political activity because you are now advocating for the success or failure of a party or candidate. Bottom line, if the activity does not include a showing of support or opposition to a political party, group, or candidate for partisan office, then it is nonpartisan and participation is not limited by Department of Defense 1344.10 or the Hatch Act, though the activity might be limited by other laws or regulations, 
such as participation in public demonstrations, but more on that later. The final terms we will define are the categories of civilian employees within the Hatch Act. This is necessary because as you can see on the slide, there are two main civilian categories, further restricted and less restricted. Further restricted employees are subject to additional restrictions regarding active participation in partisan political campaigns and their restrictions are similar to uniformed service members. However, most civilians in the Army are less restricted and may actively participate in partisan political management and campaigns, subject to the prohibitions we will discuss later in this training. Here is a list of some activities that both civilian and uniformed military members of the Army are permitted to engage in, as well as some important caveats. Registering to vote and encouraging others to participate in the political process. If you encourage others, you must be sensitive of rank and positional differences. You may not use your official authority, position, rank, or influence to affect the outcome of an election such as involving subordinates, using your official title or position, or using unit resources, such as printers, computers, or official social media accounts. You may join a partisan or nonpartisan political club and attend its meetings, so long as you are not in uniform and not on official time. You may write an individual letter expressing your personal political opinion to a news editor. This is a right as a private citizen, and you may exercise this right in your personal capacity, but not as a representative of the Department of Defense or the Army. If you choose to write such a letter, you cannot solicit votes. If your letter identifies you as a service member, then you must use a disclaimer stating that your letter is your personal opinion and does not represent the views of the Department of Defense or Army. In other words, the Army is not endorsing your opinion. Unlike a personal letter to an editor, you cannot participate in an organized letter writing campaign. If you think about it, your personal views in a letter are an expression of your individual right to free speech. But soliciting votes in that same letter or being part of an organized letter campaign are aimed at the success or failure of a political party or candidate and are both prohibited partisan political activities. Further, a disclaimer is important because we cannot imply Department of Defense or Army endorsement of a political party. Using a disclaimer helps prevent this inference. You may sign a petition for a specific legislative action so long as it is not aimed at a political candidate or party. You may display a normal size bumper sticker on your POV but multiple or oversized stickers are prohibited. This bumper sticker is a form of speech and is a way to express your personal political opinion, which you may do in your personal capacity, as we will discuss more in a moment. For example, having a campaign bumper sticker for a specific candidate or having a Green Party or other political party bumper sticker would be permitted. However, this does not extend to bumper stickers that contain disparaging or insulting phrases. You may express your personal political opinion. However, use caution. Uniform members are subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and we are always accountable for what we say and do, not just in person, but also online. While you may express your personal opinion, use caution when doing so. Articles 88 and 134 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice criminalize contemptuous words against elected officials. Contemptuous words includes those that are insulting and rude. For example, if you write an offensive social media post criticizing the president, vice president, or a member of Congress, you may be punished by your command. During the Civil War, there is a record of a court-martial where a service member called the president a loafer. And during World War II, another service member called the president a socialist. In a more recent example from the social media era, 
a service member was involuntarily separated with an other than honorable characterization for posting and refusing to remove disparaging comments about the president on social media. The offending social media included comments such as, screw the president, and I will not follow his orders or salute him. So, although you may express your personal opinion, be mindful it does not cross the line into contemptuous words. All members of the Army, both civilian and uniform, may donate money to political organizations, a party, or a committee. But remember, service members on active duty cannot give or receive monetary donations from another active duty service member. Now let's do a quick check on learning regarding partisan bumper stickers. Starting with the car on the far right, would this be okay on your privately owned vehicle? No. This car has too many stickers, even though each individual sticker is a normal sized one. How about the truck in the middle? No, though it is only one, it is too large to count as a normal sized bumper sticker. If you are thinking, hey, that's not a bumper sticker, technically you are right. But this has been interpreted to be akin to a bumper sticker. And this one is too big. Now what about the one on the left? Yes, this one would be okay, because it is a single, normal size bumper sticker. There are two main types of prohibited activities. The first are those activities only prohibited when you are on duty, in the workplace, or in uniform. The workplace includes your teleworking location, even if it's your own home. It further includes government rooms or buildings, including their break rooms, conference rooms, gyms, cafeterias, or union offices when wearing your uniform or insignia or when using a government vehicle. The second type of activities are those prohibited 24-7. Here is a list of prohibited activities while you are on duty in the workplace or in uniform. Let's do an example. Could a soldier check the social media page of her favorite partisan political candidate while running on a treadmill in a post gym? No. Emailing, texting, using social media, or visiting websites or political parties, candidates, or groups is prohibited while in the workplace, and the on-post gym counts as the workplace. This is true regardless of whether you are using a personal or government-issued device or account. Now, turning towards the 24-7 restrictions. Yes, these prohibitions apply 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It does not matter if you are at home during non-duty hours or on leave. These prohibitions always apply. You are prohibited from engaging in fundraising for any partisan political cause or candidate. This includes not just in-person fundraising, but also through social media or other online platforms. For instance, you happen to like a presidential candidate and you follow their online social media. Through the social media, you are notified of an upcoming fundraising event. You may not like or share the notice as you are promoting the event to others. Keep in mind, that does not prohibit you from donating money to the fundraising event in your private, personal capacity. Though you may attend a partisan meeting or rally in your private and personal capacity, you may never speak or otherwise actively participate in the execution of the meeting or rally. Additionally, you are prohibited from ever wearing your uniform to a partisan political gathering, meeting, rally, or similar event. In 2012, a soldier in uniform appeared and spoke before a partisan political rally for a presidential candidate. In this case, a Ron Paul rally, where he encouraged others to vote for the candidate. For these violations, he received a permanently filed general officer memorandum of reprimand from his command 
for violating Directive 1344.10. In a more recent example from the 2020 election cycle, two junior soldiers in uniform were found standing at attention in a video feed presented at the National Democratic Party Convention. The supervisor for the two soldiers was reprimanded for allowing the soldiers to appear in uniform at this partisan political event. Further restricted civilian employees and soldiers alike are prohibited from actively participating in campaigning. This prohibition means you may not volunteer for a campaign, distribute campaign materials, organize campaign events, serve as a party delegate, forward campaign emails, or run for partisan political office. The prohibition on running for public office in a partisan election does not apply to service members in the reserve component. But further limitations do exist. So reserve component service members wishing to run for partisan political office should consult an ethics counselor for guidance. Especially in this post-COVID environment, where telework is more commonplace, it is important to remember that when you are teleworking away from your office, that that location is still considered at the workplace. And thus, all the rules relating to the workplace apply to that telework location, even if that is your home. Specifically, you may not engage in partisan political activity, such as sharing or liking partisan political content on social media, even from your personal device, while on duty in your telework location. Additionally, you may not wear partisan political clothing or have partisan political materials visible in the background of a telework video conference. So, can a teleworking employee use their government computer to visit a partisan political candidate's Instagram account after teleworking hours? No, even though in this example, you are no longer on duty, you still may never use a government communication device to engage in partisan political activity. Let's do a few more checks on learning to reinforce what we have learned so far. May you display any of the four items shown on the screen at work in your office? Yes, you can display these items because the Hatch Act and Directive 1344.10 do not prohibit them. None of them are directed toward the success or failure of a partisan political party, group, or candidate. Conservative and liberal are political ideologies and without more, do not cross the line into prohibited partisan political activities. And the pro-life or pro-choice buttons are addressing a social issue and current ballot initiatives across the country. And again, without more, are nonpartisan. How about these items? No, none of these items may be displayed. They are all prohibited by the Hatch Act and Directive 1344.10 because they are all aimed at the success or failure of a partisan party or candidate. The Democratic, Republican, Libertarian, and Green parties are all national political parties and thus, by definition, are partisan political activities. As previously discussed, in the key definition section of this training. The No Trump and Let's Go Brandon slogans are both directed against partisan candidates, here, former President Trump and President Biden. They are aimed at the failure of the candidates. The Office of Special Counsel has determined that upon both President Biden's and former President Trump's presidential candidacy announcements, certain slogans from prior elections, 2016 and 2020 campaigns, are considered partisan political activities. For example, while on duty or in the workplace, an employee may not wear, display, or distribute items with the slogans, 
2024 Biden-Harris, Make America Great Again, MAGA, or any other materials from President Biden's 2020 or 2024 campaigns, or former President Trump's 2016, 2020, or 2024 campaigns. Keep in mind, these are only a few examples. Similar partisan political slogans from other partisan political parties or candidates would also be prohibited. Wait, but a few slides ago, you were just told that you may have a partisan political bumper sticker on your personal vehicle and that that vehicle can come onto the installation. You were also told you can't have campaign materials in your workplace. So what's the difference? Aren't these the same? No, they're not the same thing. Your personal vehicle is just that. It is personal to you and the nature of a vehicle is mobile. It moves from place to place. You use your vehicle to get around in your personal life outside of the federal workplace when you are off duty and when you're not in uniform. The bumper sticker is a form of speech and when you are off duty or not in the workplace or in uniform, you may express your personal political opinion subject to the caveats already discussed. Thus, because of the nature of a vehicle, a policy decision was made to balance your First Amendment right to speech by permitting a normal size bumper sticker on your vehicle, even when parked in a government garage or on a government parking lot. If you're not sure if something is covered, seek counsel from your local servicing ethics counselor. What about these pictures of President Biden? May you display any of them at work? Yes, you may display the president's official portrait on the left, and you've likely seen this in your unit area. This is associated with his official position and is not related to his reelection campaign. Similarly, you could display a personal picture of the president if the president is performing an official function in the picture, like the picture in the middle of President Biden awarding the Medal of Honor. However, the picture on the right is prohibited. This picture is campaign material directed toward the success of President Biden's re-election campaign. Note the podium has his re-election logo and not the official seal of the president. Okay, what about these? Well, the answer varies. Starting on the left, neither Ms. Hillary Clinton, Mr. Ron Paul, and former Presidents Obama and Bush are current partisan candidates. Therefore, technically, yeah, you could display these in your office since they do not advocate for the success or failure of a partisan political candidate. However, both former President Trump and President Biden are current candidates for the upcoming 2024 presidential election, and thus, both of those are prohibited in your office. Over the past several slides, we learned that the items currently displayed on the screen are not prohibited because they are not directed toward the success or failure of a partisan political party, group, or candidate. However, we must be mindful of the need for good order and discipline, as well as perception. So the real question is not, can we display these items, but should we display these items? Perception. Is this a lawful but awful scenario? Directive 1344.10 provides guidance. Any activity that is not expressly prohibited but is still contrary to the spirit and intent of the directive shall be avoided, especially where the activity creates an appearance of endorsement of a partisan political activity. So even though these six items can technically be displayed, you and your leadership will determine if it is appropriate to display them in the workplace. The Hatch Act was enacted in 1939 and last amended in 2012, and Directive 1344.10 
was last updated in 2008, about 15 years ago. A lot has changed over this time regarding how society receives and shares information. Yes, I'm talking about social media and how it's exploded over the last few decades into the plethora of platforms used today. The social media environment as an information hub has become primed for partisan political parties, groups, and candidates. This next section will provide you the necessary tools to recognize your left and right limits, helping you navigate social media and political activities, ensuring you stay in bounds. This slide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of what you may and may not do on social media regarding partisan political activities. For instance, you may follow, like, or comment on the social media pages of a candidate for partisan office in your private personal capacity. Remember, not while on duty or in the workplace, and not if it amounts to fundraising. If your own social media page identifies you as a soldier or working for the Army, then you should use a disclaimer. It should state that the views stated are yours and in no way represent the views of the Department of Defense or the Army. There are also several actions you are prohibited from engaging in on social media, such as posting, formerly known as tweeting, reposting, sharing, or liking fundraising posts or any other content that solicits political contributions. You may not share or like partisan political content while you are in the workplace or on duty. You also may not post videos on social media sites such as TikTok endorsing a candidate while on duty or while in uniform. You may not use your official authority or influence even on social media to affect the outcome of a partisan election. Additionally, using official army social media or a unit's external online presence to engage in partisan political activity is strictly prohibited. Let's look at a few examples. Here, you can see you are authorized to list your political views and your demographic or background information on your social media account, even if you identify as a soldier or Department of Army civilian elsewhere in your profile. However, you may not share or like a fundraising post on social media at any time, on or off duty. Remember, when you like or share a fundraising post, it appears on your timeline and in your friends' feeds. In other words, by liking or sharing such a post, you are engaging in prohibited partisan political fundraising because you are disseminating the fundraising event, which is prohibited under both the Hatch Act and Directive 1344.10. Always remember, when engaging on social media, to think, type, then post. Think about the message you are communicating and who could potentially view it. Only share messages consistent with the Army values. And finally, only post those messages that demonstrate dignity and respect for yourself and others. We are always accountable for the things we say, do, and post. Use disclaimers on personal social media platforms acknowledging that your views are yours and do not represent the views of the Department of Defense or the Army, especially if you have pictures or posts on your social media pages or profiles that associate you with the Army. Doing this can assist in avoiding inferences of official endorsement. What can happen if you violate the Hatch Act for civilians or Directive 1344.10 for service members? Well, as you can see from this slide, there's a large range of possible penalties for violations, some of which are severe. 
Earlier in this presentation, we discussed that participating in rallies and demonstrations are generally nonpartisan and therefore not governed by Directive 1344.10 or the Hatch Act. However, there are still authorities that apply and limit your ability to fully participate in these activities for service members. Department of Defense Instruction 1325.06 governs participating in public demonstrations and protest activities. The policy outlined in Instruction 1325.06 charges commanders with balancing the soldier's First Amendment rights with good order, discipline, and unit effectiveness. Soldiers are prohibited from participating in off-post demonstrations, rallies, or protests during normal duty hours if the event takes place outside of the United States, if the demonstration is unlawful, or if violence is likely to occur. Additionally, because of the appearance of implied official endorsement of an activity by the Department of Defense or the Army, soldiers are prohibited from participating in all demonstrations, rallies, or protests if they are in uniform. You may never wear your uniform while participating in these types of events. Unless a rally or march is organized by or conducted in support of a partisan party, group, or candidate, the Hatch Act does not limit Army civilian participation. However, even then, Army civilians must not officially endorse or create an appearance of officially endorsing non-federal entities. As such, Army civilians may only participate in public demonstrations in a private, personal capacity and during off-duty hours or in a leave status. As always, when expressing your personal opinion publicly, it must be clear that your opinion does not represent the official position of the Department of Defense or the Army. Finally, this infographic is a great resource for a quick glance at what you can, can't, must, and should do when you choose to engage in public demonstrations, political activities, and social media. An Army civilian is teleworking and wearing a Make America Great Again shirt and a MAGA hat during a teleconference meeting during the duty day. The employee's supervisor asks the employee to change, but the employee says, these slogans are from prior campaigns and therefore he can wear them. Is this correct? No, the employee may not wear these items in the workplace, including a telework environment. Former President Trump is a current partisan political candidate and these slogans are considered partisan political activity and prohibited on duty or in the workplace which extends to the telework location. A soldier had a photograph taken with a Democratic Congresswoman at an official event. She's now up for re-election in a partisan political race. May the soldier display the photograph in the office or workspace? And second, can the soldier post it on his social media personal site? Yes. The soldier may display the photograph in his office or workspace, but only if the photograph was already on display prior to the campaign season. The soldier is personally in the photo, which in this case, he is. The photograph has personal significance to the soldier and there's no political purpose for displaying the photograph. Remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And this is one of those areas where discussion with command or supervisor might be appropriate. And yes, the soldier can post a photo to his social media. The photograph in this case is not partisan political activity. And even if, for instance, the photograph was taken at a campaign event, one still could share it on social media, but not from work, not during duty hours or from a government device. And whenever social media is being used, especially when it's your personal account and you are tied to the military, a disclaimer might be appropriate to avoid concerns of implied endorsement. A soldier hears about an authorized Black Lives Matter march organized for the upcoming weekend located in a nearby city center. He wants to attend first may the soldier attend and march in the event in her private personal capacity? And second, 
May she comment about the march and any related social justice issues on her social media. Yes, but not in uniform. Remember, the chain of command may limit or prohibit participation if an event supports a partisan political party, group, or candidate, or if the event occurs during the duty day, occurs outside of the United States, constitutes a breach of law and order, or violence is likely to result from the event. And yes, she may discuss the march and comment on social justice issues on social media because they are nonpartisan and they do not advocate for the success or failure of a particular partisan political party, group, or candidate. Always remember to think about the message you want to convey and only type and post those messages that are consistent with the Army values and demonstrate dignity and respect for yourself and others. Last one. A soldier really believes that a particular candidate and the Army's interests are aligned. He's really excited to share this information with his coworkers and other members of his unit. May he talk about this with his coworkers or unit? No, he may not talk about this with coworkers or the unit. Though you are generally free to express your personal opinion about partisan political activities, Directive 1344.10 and the Hatch Act prohibit these conversations at work. You must always remember to avoid using your official position as a soldier or Army civilian to affect the outcome of an election. Therefore, this soldier may not encourage members of the unit to vote for a particular candidate. This completes our training. If you have any questions about political activities or participating in public demonstrations, please seek assistance from your chain of command or your local ethics counselor. As members of the Army, it is all of our responsibility to safeguard our relationship with the American people. Thank you for your time and attention.